Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Rear Helper Airbags on a 2020 Ford F-150. Trucks are meant for work generally, but as we've seen, as trucks have gotten bigger and they become crew cabs, they become our daily drivers. And unfortunately, the suspension's kind of designed for comfortable driving. But when we need it to work, sometimes that suspension gets a little overworked. And that's because our jounce bumpers can only do so much. And it takes so long for that suspension to compress before they really do anything. And at that point, you're putting quite a bit of load on your suspension. So whether you have something in the bed of your truck that's heavy, or you have a tongue weight that's heavy on a trailer, or in the case of our neighbor here, you're using a fifth wheel, that truck is going to sag in the back. And that's kind of bad for the rear suspension because it is overworking it. But also, there's a lot of other things that can cause issues in the front of the vehicle. So as the rear squats down with that weight, the front will also tend to pick up. So nighttime driving, your headlight beams are actually going to be a little bit higher. So you're not gonna be able to see the road as well and you're gonna be blinding people that are oncoming traffic. Also going along with that is the suspension in the front's gonna get overworked and it can cause a little bit of tire wear as that camber kind of tucks in. And with that, you're also losing the contact patch of your tires, which you lose handling. You might've noticed if your truck is overloaded in the rear, it starts to get a little bit squirrely and light in steering. So putting air in the back to level that out is going to regain that. And also when it comes to braking, you already have weight on the truck, but your braking's done with the contact patch of tires. So again, leveling that up, you're gonna get better braking. So overall, for your suspension to give it the best chance to not wear out prematurely, but also just have a safer towing experience, airbags are a great option. And you've seen maybe sumo springs that drop in and those work just fine. But to have the ability to adjust it is really nice, especially in the case of this, being a fifth wheel and they tow an RV, if your weight's off kilter, you have control of each bag individually, so you can custom tune the suspension to whatever you're hauling. Now adding air bags to your rear suspension basically just replaces your jounce bumper. And the jounce bumper does a pretty good job overall of when that weight is compressed, it's gonna hold that there. But sometimes it gets a little bit heavier or like our neighbor here is using a fifth wheel. And when you have that trailer on there, it's going to really squat the rear of the truck and that's gonna cause some issues. So having the airbag is really nice because when you're not loaded up and you're just driving the truck around normally, you can go ahead and just leave five PSI in the bags. It's gonna ride along just fine. But when you really need to stiffen up that rear suspension and give it a fighting chance to counteract that sag, your airbags are going to be adjustable by just adding air pressure. And also running in a dual path system means that if your RV maybe has a little bit extra weight on one side versus the other, you can offset that and custom tune your airbags to the perfect PSI for your towing. So here's the factory jounce bumper that came off and this goes into the frame rail and until it makes contact with your rear axle, it's not really gonna do anything and that's because normal driving, you don't really need to ride along this, but it takes quite a bit of distance for this to bottom out on the axle before this is really giving your suspension a fighting chance. So during that, your rear suspension is going to be under a solid load and it's going to be working pretty hard, especially with this bottomed out. And that's where the airbag makes a big difference. You can see just the height alone is nearly double at this point and that's just going to be great because it's always going to have that nice little cushioning no matter what so even when you're driving around with that five psi in it's going to be nice and cozy it's not going to be too bouncy or rough or firm of a ride but once you put that weight on there a lot of times that rear end will kind of just squat down it's not a very good ride bumping this up just kind of gives the suspension a fighting chance and it really does just feel like it's a little more agile a little bit able to work better and really that's because you're not necessarily adding any weight capacity to your suspension you're just really supplementing to give it a fighting chance by not overworking it it's taking a lot of that load off by supporting it with the air and that way your suspension can still work without being stressed out 
Now overall, the installation on this isn't too terribly hard. You're essentially taking out your old jounce bumpers and you're gonna have two brackets that sandwich around the frame and the axle to put our bag in place. And that's gonna just allow us to replace that jounce. And that way we always have that airbag kind of supporting us. And while driving, you always wanna maintain at least five PSI. That way those bags aren't just squishing around. You want it slightly firm, but whenever you're ready to actually fill it up, and putting a heavy load on you can just simply fill that with a manual inflation valve and you can mount that wherever you want so it's a nice clean look and before you know it you'll regain all your suspension you'll level out your vehicle and you're going to prevent that premature wear now as far as that installation goes this is custom catered to the f-150 so the brackets are designed for it and i'm going to walk you through every step to make sure you get yours installed so let's head inside to the shop and we'll take a closer look at the airbags and also i'll show you how to get them installed to begin our installation we're going to go ahead and lower down our spare tire it's just going to give us a little bit more room while working underneath the vehicle not necessarily required but having more space throughout the install is just going to make it a little bit easier so we'll go ahead and get this lowered down. Also, just give this a little bit more space. I'm gonna go ahead and get our heat shield down and it's just gonna be three 13 millimeter bolts. You're gonna have one on the side here and then two that are just gonna be on this crossbar. Now we're obviously doing our install here on a lift and that's mostly just to show you all at home how this install is done but chances are you're probably doing this in your garage or on a driveway um, and you're going to want to chalk the front wheels because we're going to be raising up on our hitch or another support underneath here to get that rear suspension unsprung um, so that's going to allow us to get a little bit more space to not only get our jounce bumpers out but open that up to get our bags in place so you are going to want to have a floor jack ready um, and you might want to have some jack stands ready also just to kind of keep yourself safe so make sure again you have chalks in the front so it doesn't roll on you but we'll go ahead and raise this up and that's going to give us a gap between our axle and our jounce bumper so before it's a little bit uh, pretty small here and again the bags are going to go right there so raising this up is just going to open this up for us so now we need to go ahead and remove our factory jounce bumpers and these are going to be attached there's a 13 millimeter bolt that's going to be up in the jounce bumper so you're going to need an extension and a socket here so just make sure that you're on there and it might take a little bit of impact here to just kind of knock that loose but once we get that off we can go ahead and remove the bolt and get our jounce bumpers out now these do have factory thread lock on them so if it does feel like it's kind of uh, a little bit tight and binding that's why so it might take you a little bit of uh, extra strength here on your ratchet but these should come out once you get this going now you can go ahead and repeat the same process on the other jones bumper next we're going to grab our black bolts that we have from the supplied hardware and put these in the spot where we just took our jounce bumpers off and we're going to want to leave about half an inch or so gap um, so just kind of thread this in enough and that should be fine there we'll go ahead and do that on the other side as well so now you're going to want to grab your bracket and these are side specific they'll be marked this one has an r so that'll be our passenger side and we're going to be just sliding this up and over um, where we put that bolt and you can see why we left those threads and this should kind of just cinch up against the frame you can see this flat portion here as well as this tab down there now we're going to go ahead and tighten this down and i'm just going to be using a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench and we'll get this tightened down now there is a torque setting for this but uh I attempted to tighten this down with a torque wrench and really I couldn't get a socket or a crow's foot in here. So uh, it's relatively low setting, just refer to your instruction manual. Um, I think best bet is just kind of make sure that it's you know, pretty snug here and I think hand tight with a ratcheting wrench should be enough to kind of hold this in place. But main thing you're gonna wanna do here is just hold this against the frame as you're tightening it. You want it a nice secure fit. So we got our threads close to tight. I'm going to go back with my wrench and get this snugged in. So 
So we're going to be using our U-bolt. Now our truck here actually has a fifth wheel installed and that is going to change whether or not you can use this because the brackets might be in the way of the U-bolt, but not to worry. There's still a method to be able to secure our frame in place. But luckily the way our brackets are set up, we're still able to use the U-bolt and I'm still going to show you how to use the self-tapping screw if this isn't going to work with your fifth wheel. So first, if you don't have the fifth wheel, you'll be taking your U-bolt. And if you don't have the fifth wheel, this bracket's not gonna be in the way, so it should pretty easily go over your frame rail. And then you're gonna just align. There's a hole here, and then there's a hole on the other side of the bracket. And we're just gonna drop this in. And this is nice and open. The frame has nothing that I have to worry about pinching. Um, on our driver's side, I'll show you that it does actually have some things to take in consideration to not damage, which is gonna be your brake lines as well as um, an electrical wire that's running there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get our serrated flange nuts in place here. And when tightening these down, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we kind of evenly do it. Uh, we don't wanna put too much stress and cause this to kind of go uh, odd one way. So I'm just gonna hand tighten it, both sides, make sure they're snug. And then as I tighten these down, I'm gonna just go one side and then the other and just match the rotations until this is nice and snug. And then we're gonna come back with our torque wrench um, to make sure that we're at a perfect spot. So really it shouldn't take too much here of tightening before getting to our torque wrench. So on our driver's side, when we're putting our U-bolt in, we want to make sure that we don't have any interference from our brake lines or our wire loom that we have here. Now, this one also has a fifth wheel and it is going to vary a little bit depending on what fifth wheel you have um, in order to make these work. So I could see where those brackets could potentially get in the way of that U-bolt being able to work. Um, and so you may need to use a self-tapping screw in this section and I'll show you how to do that. But Luckily, ours works well. And if you don't have a fifth wheel bracket, this is gonna be extremely similar. So we'll just go ahead and get our U-bolt passed in here. And then this should just kind of drop down. Now the clearances you're looking for, as you can see, the U-bolt's gonna pass in. There's two holes on our bracket. But we wanna make sure that this isn't putting pressure. These are hard lines and as this rubs against it, that can cause damage. So just make sure that yours isn't binding up against this. Um, so we can see we got a little bit of pressure here. So we're gonna wanna just make sure that again, you're not crunching those lines down. Um, and also as this tightens down, you're not uh, damaging your wire loom by crimping this down as well. On the outside of the frame, you can see our fifth wheel bracket. And this, again, it does allow for our U-bolt to pass in, but if your bracket's larger, that's where you're gonna use that self-tapping screw in the bottom. So you can see we're still able to get our U-bolt passed in and be able to tighten this down without any interference. So now just using a uh, crow's foot here on our torque wrench, I think this is our best method to be able to get to these. Otherwise, with a socket, it's gonna be pretty tricky. Um, now, if you need a torque wrench, we have them available here at E-Trailer, and the torque settings are just found um, in the instruction manual. So this is uh, fairly important just to make sure that we're not overdoing it on our hardware. It can cause things to distort and just put too much stress on this. Um, also, if you need to uh, rent a torque wrench, if you don't have one handy and you need to just get this install done, you can generally rent them at an auto parts store. And our crow's foot here just allows us to kind of get into tight spots that maybe we couldn't quite get with a socket. So I'm gonna just kind of bounce back and forth with my torque wrench. And again, using that torque setting in the instruction manual, we'll get these torqued down properly. Now again, if you do have your fifth wheel, those brackets can get in the way. And, and also our U-bolts here, they're holding this in place no problem. I'm not exactly super happy with the angle that it puts it at just because our bracket is in the way up top. So I'm gonna show you the other method to secure your bracket, um, especially if you can't get your U-bolts in. And what you're gonna do is just take a center punch here, go through this hole, just align it with the next hole that's uh, it's right against the frame there. So I'm gonna just make ourselves a little punch there. And then I'm gonna go with a 5 16 drill bit and we're gonna start drilling that out and that's gonna give us enough space to get our self-tapping screw in. And this is gonna secure that by drilling into the frame rail and still create a safe mounting point. So if you're able to use your U-bolts, you don't have to do this step. But again, this is a, a method to secure it if you do have that fifth wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
and just make sure we get this centered up nice on our punch hole and just start drilling through. So with that drilled out, we'll go ahead and we can take our shelf tapping screw and get this set in. Now, um, if you're having trouble right away getting this to start, you might want to waller out the hole just a little bit to get this started, but make sure you don't go too big because otherwise these threads aren't going to bite in and we'll just get this tightened up and then come back with our torque wrench. So I do suggest with this kind of getting it started with just hand tools, um, using an impact again, this can kind of make it go a little bit crooked. So, and kind of ruin those threads that we're making. So just kind of put pressure on it and get this to where that bolt's looking nice and perpendicular here, but also started. And then once you're kind of get some rotations in, if you want to, you can go ahead and use an impact to kind of drive this in. Um, so it might fight you a little bit just because we are creating new threads here for the first little bit, but we'll go ahead and get this snug down. So now with our passenger side bracket all in place, we'll just go ahead and repeat the same process on our driver side. Now our bottom bracket actually slides kind of around our U-bolts here on our leaf springs. And this little bracket here that has our brake cables, we're gonna need to remove this by using a 10 millimeter socket. So we'll just go ahead and get this removed. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other side. As you're gonna see, there's a bracket uh, just like this. Now the bracket also kind of extends over a decent amount. So on the right side here, or the passenger side, we're gonna take this little plastic clip here. You can cut the zip tie, just be careful, or you can just pry this plastic clip up. A lot of times you can push on the bottom side to just kind of push it out of here. But that's gonna give us some clearance for our bracket. Now our driver side, we're gonna be doing a little bit of modification in order for that side to fit. So we can head over here. And this is kind of where we're running into some clearance issues. So we are gonna probably have to trim our bracket here. So you'll see this little rubber grommet that pushes in. So just kind of separate this here. And this portion is also attached to it. It's kind of just clipped on there. So we're gonna go ahead and get that removed as well. Now this is kind of just clipped on here. So just kind of pry away at this. There we go. And you can see this little tab portion here just kind of snaps in there. So if you can get it to separate, that's uh, obviously our clip broke here. There's a tab, but it was kind of stuck on there. So the main thing is we're getting clearance to be able to move this out of the way. And we are going to have to trim this bracket off. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of get my markings here and come back with a cutting tool and we'll get this trimmed off. So I've made my mark here and I'm gonna show you why we kind of removed those brackets as well as those plastic lines because the way that this bracket sits, it goes around the U-bolt so it's kind of a tight fit here. But once this is in place, this is gonna sit flat and you're gonna see it's pretty tight here. So my thought was originally to try to bend this out of the way so we don't have to cut around these lines but we are gonna need to kind of notch this. Um, so if you need a reference to see how much to actually cut off, this line will be pretty good um, but but you may have to trim enough just to get this to drop in place. So I'm gonna go right along this edge. Now, as far as cutting, just be careful here. We do have some lines obviously that we don't wanna nick. So if you need to zip tie these out of the way, uh, that way you don't accidentally make contact by all means. And as far as cutting, I'm gonna be using a uh, oscillating tool with a metal blade that works pretty well. A Dremel, um, a Sawzall, just be careful here. You don't wanna slip and hit any of your hard lines. Um, and turn this into more than it needs to be. So just take your time here, cut along here, and we'll get our bracket cleaned up. You can see this portion down here, we're also gonna kind of trim right there as well. So with that cut, we should be able to get this portion of our bracket taken out. I'm just gonna use pliers. I didn't wanna cut too far and nick the axle, so. Just again, through this process, just take your time. So 
So now we need to go ahead and we're gonna test fit our bracket in place. And also we're gonna be taking measurements here. So we're gonna get the bracket in place, but also we need to lower the truck down to its normal ride height. So whatever we're using to suspend um, our truck to unspring that suspension, we're gonna be lowering it back down. This is a pretty tight fit here. So we'll just take our time. It seems like it's binding up here, um, right where our leaf springs are perched on our axle. Now I got our bracket in place and I did kind of have to hammer it along. Um, so with a dead blow, just kind of work it in because it's pretty tight along here. So you're gonna want these to kind of line up with where our brackets were on both sides. Um, there's also uh, that hole as well on here that there's a uh, spot where we're gonna put hardware, but main thing is you want this kind of sitting almost even here with the leaf springs. I tried to get it as, in as much as I could and just hammering it down, it seems to kind of top out right here as well as right here. So main thing is it's sitting almost flat here. Uh, it should be almost parallel with the leaf springs if you kind of look across here. So once you have that in place, you need to determine whether or not the spacer has to be used. So you're gonna be looking for a measurement between these. And again, you're gonna to wanna to drop your suspension where it's just naturally sitting. So from the mounting point of the bracket here, you're gonna to wanna to measure down to the bottom. And if it's more than six and a half or 6.75, um, up to seven and um, a half there, you're gonna to want to use the spacer. Ours is coming in right at five. So we're not needing to use our spacer. So we'll just set this aside, but that is gonna change the hardware that we use when mounting up. So just keep that in mind. So now at this point, we know we have clearance, our bracket has been cut out enough, and uh, we can actually go ahead and take this out because we're gonna be mounting our uh, airbag assembly on here. So grab your bracket and then make your way to a spot where we can start putting our airbags on here. So now we're gonna get our brackets set up with the airbags and I've gone ahead and laid these out. This is gonna be the front of the truck. So we're gonna run our carriage bolt through here. Um, so just to kind of keep these uh, you know, laid out properly. So what we're gonna do is grab our airbag and you're gonna see that one side has the fitting for our air fitting and that's where it's gonna feed in. We're gonna want to grab the bottom side and our roll plate and you can see this little portion of the sticker here that's missing. That's, we're gonna just line that up here and you'll see our threaded portions there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this bolted onto our bracket. Now, since this is going to be the front, we want our air fitting on the inside. So we wanna make sure that we align this properly. So just make sure that your air fitting's facing towards the inside of the truck. And then I'm gonna go ahead, flip this over and we can go ahead and get our hardware in place here. Now we're gonna be using the hole here that's on the carriage bolt side and then we'll be obviously mounting it there. Now if you're using your spacer, it's gonna also go in between here and there's gonna be longer hardware. So since we're not using our spacer, we're gonna be using these shorter ones here. And we're just gonna get these kind of finger tight because we're gonna to want to allow for a little bit of adjustment once this is mounted on the vehicle. So I'm just gonna go ahead with my flat washer and split washer and just again, hand tighten these on. And we can go ahead and do the same on the other bag and bracket assembly. So now you're gonna to wanna to flip these over and you should have your air fitting in line with the carriage bolt and that way you know it's in the proper orientation. And then we're gonna take our push connect fitting here and we're just gonna hand tighten this on until snug. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna tighten this down one and a half rotations with a wrench. So just kind of keep a reference mark so there's one and there's a half. Now you don't wanna over tighten these. Uh, this is gonna make sure that we have a nice seal there and we'll go ahead and repeat on our other air fitting. So now we can go ahead, raise our truck back up to where we have that uh, nice gap to get our assembly put in place. So just ensure that the carriage bolt is going towards the front and we'll just go ahead, kind of get this in place. Now, sometimes you can squeeze the bag down a little bit to uh, give you a little bit more room, um, but it is a little bit tight here now that we have everything kind of put together. So just kind of get this fed in place here. Set that there for now as we kind of get our bracket here in place. 
and we may need to kind of grab our hammer here just to kind of persuade it over a little bit but we're looking to align our holes here um, with our brake bracket and we're going to have self-tapping screws so it's going to go in the front here as well as uh, I'm sorry, in the back here, but also in the front, we're gonna line that one as well and get these in place. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my hammer, kind of knock this in place, get this set up, and then get our hardware. So this front side here, just, you might kind of, again, have to hammer this along and up to kind of get this in place, but you should be able to align it with that hole um, with those self-threading screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these tightened down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just get these tightened down nice and snug, and that's gonna hold our bracket in place. So we're just gonna use the 13 millimeter socket here and just make sure it's nice and snug. Now that we have our shelf tapping screws in place there, we're gonna go ahead and grab our carriage bolt. Now, when we do this, just be sure that you're kind of, you know, avoiding our lines here. Um, so it's kind of tricky here to kind of feed this in, but once you get that head passed in, it should be all right. Um, so we don't want it to damage any of our lines. So just make sure that these are kind of out of the way. We're not putting stress on anything. And then we're going to take our lower bracket here. And this is just going to slide up and kind of cradle around the axle. And then we'll just take our serrated flange nuts. And I'm just going to get kind of get these started. And same thing just like we do with our U-bolt. We're going to want to evenly tighten this to where um, this is kind of sitting uh, with both of our threads of the carriage bolt. Uh, being parallel with one another, you want to e evenly kind of tighten these up. So just go ahead and do this and then we're going to go back with our torque wrench and torque those down to the specifications in the instruction manual. So a good rule of thumb here to kind of just make sure that it's evenly uh, spaced out here is just making sure that our distance from our bracket to the top here is even with the other side. So just go ahead and kind of measure that out and then tighten accordingly before coming back with your torque wrench. So now that we have this in place, we're gonna go ahead and take our roll plate, and this is gonna slide over our air fitting, and we're gonna align our holes. Now, you can squeeze the bag down to kind of get this in place. Um, you can also raise or lower, obviously, if you need to, to kind of get this lined up. But once we have this in place, what we're gonna be doing is looking to make sure that we have about an eighth of an inch gap here. Uh, we wanna have just a little bit of space, so if you need to, you can raise and lower your jack to uh, get that spacing there. And then we're going to go ahead and take our hardware and we're going to feed this through our roll plate and get this threaded into our bag. So I'm just going to get these started here and just finger tight is going to be fine. And go ahead and do this on the other side as well. So now that we have everything hand tightened in place, what we're going to need to do is you'll see that you do have some alignment here and that's just because it's slotted. So we're really trying to make sure that we don't have any clearance issues. The main thing that I see is going to be this line that runs in. We don't want that rubbing against it. So kind of pushing this forward and making sure that this is in a nice line here. Um, that's kind of what we're looking for. At that point, we can start to tighten these down. Uh, so we have the two up top that we just hand threaded in as well as the two on the bottom on our bottom bracket that we left loose earlier. So we're going to get those tightened down and I'll attempt to get my torque wrench. I think I can get these ones torqued down properly. There are torque settings that go with this, so we may have to use our crow's foot in order to get in place, but we'll go ahead and get those torqued down, and then we can just go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the other side. So I've gone ahead and I've gotten all of our hardware tightened down and torqued properly. So all that's really left to do is run our airline, but something else we want to make sure that we do is all of our lines that are uh, were loosened or moved, we're going to want to secure them with the zip tie to where they're not going to pinch or rub against anything too much. So, um, you know, as long as it doesn't have any sharp edges rubbing against your line, you should be good. So just make sure that both sections here where we've moved stuff is in a good position just by zipping it up. Now, as far as running our airlines, we're gonna be doing this in a dual path, meaning you're gonna have individual control of each bag with its own Schrader valve. Now, as far as mounting this, you can kind of choose how you wanna do this. A lot of times people use them as the license plate bolt 
Um, so it's gonna go in that same position and that way it's kind of a clean look. You really don't know that it's there, holds your license plate in place and then when you need to fill it up, you can just take that cap off. So we have one single line here. There's a Schrader valve on each side. So I'm gonna just find the middle of this and when cutting airline, you need to make sure that you're not using just a pair of wire cutters or snips or something along those lines because it's gonna pinch the line and that's gonna cause it to leak. Generally, if you do have issues with your airbag, it's because of the cut that's made on the line. So I'm using a tubing cutter. It's just got a flat surface and a razor blade that kind of cuts straight through it. So another option is if you have a utility knife, just pushing this hard line on something solid and making a nice clean cut without putting pressure as much as possible. So I'm gonna just find our middle here. And you also wanna make sure it's a nice square cut too. And that's gonna just sit better in our uh, quick connect fittings. So we'll just hold this in place, make our cut. And then just make sure that there's no burrs. You can kind of just rub your finger around it. That should knock everything down. And it's just going to ensure that it's going to sit properly in our push connect. So what we can do now, we have each side here. We're just going to go ahead and push this in to our quick connect fitting. And you should kind of feel it pop into place like that. So you may have to give it a little pressure, but if you pull on it, it should bite into it to where it's not going to move. And I'll go ahead and get our other one in place here. So now all we need to do is run this back. So as I mentioned before, I'm gonna be using our license plate hole. So just determine where you want yours mounted up. We're gonna run these back and then I'll show you how I kind of have it laid out. Just using some zip ties to run it along a nice safe spot. Obviously you're gonna have your spare tire back in place. So trying to avoid that and also avoiding the exhaust. That way it doesn't melt our airline. And before I get this all zip tied up, I'm actually gonna get this portion mounted up where our license plate uh, bolts are gonna be. And that way I can pull back the extra and we don't have an extra ton of slack here that we have to coil up. So what I'm gonna do here is I can see pretty quickly right where our holes are on the back side. It's pretty easy to see where we're gonna have to drill through. So we have these little nubs here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut these off and then I'm just gonna enlarge the hole large enough to get our Schrader valve passed through. So I'm just gonna use an 11.30 seconds and that way we can get our Schrader valves passed through. So we'll just drill straight through. So you're gonna wanna make sure that if you have any flashing to cut that out. So you can kind of just push it in the opening and then just run a razor knife around and that should get a lot of that flashing off. You can go ahead and do that on the back side. That way you just get a nice flush mount here and it's gonna be all proper once we have our hardware in place. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our hex nut and we're just gonna spin this on and this is gonna allow us to kind of adjust how far out it's going to sit once we have it here. We'll take our star washer, that's gonna bite into our plastic and then we'll just go ahead and feed this through. And at this point, you can kind of start to see where that's going to sit. Now, granted, your license plate's going to go on there, and we do have some more hardware. So I always kind of start a little bit to where it's sticking out, and you can always adjust it a little bit later. So we're going to go ahead and follow this up. We have a rubber grommet here, and this is just going to go over top. And then we're going to follow that up with a flat washer and then our hex nut here and then we'll just tighten down we should be able to hold the back too and just kind of get this nice and snug and what you're looking for is being able to get your license plate still over this and then you'll have this cap that's going to go on top and you want to be able to screw this on all the way so just adjust it to whatever works best for you well then we'll just go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now you may need to drill out the holes on your license plate to get this to fit. It's, it should fit pretty close, so just kind of pushing it on there. Um, and if you want, you can use the hex nut to tie your license plate in between the flat washer and the hex, and that way it's gonna hold that in um, nice and tight. So go ahead, you can do that. And again, we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. So I've gone ahead and routed this in a nice safe 
manner to where it's away from the exhaust and anything moving and also so we can get our spare tire back up. So just kind of using zip ties along here. I've also coiled up our extra and that way if we ever need to uh, trim off a little, uh, you know, if we do start to get leaks, it's probably going to be at that quick connect fitting. So being able to just cut that off and get a new nice cut on there, it's nice to have just a little bit of extra. So. Same thing on the other side. Again, this one has the exhaust, so I kind of try to keep it away from the outside frame rail. This is far enough away from our exhaust to where it shouldn't get hot. And I just routed it through this bracket, and that way it's not going to bounce up here and make contact with our exhaust. So now we'll go ahead and we're gonna put some air in the bags and we're mostly just gonna do a leak check. And the best way to do that is put these under pressure. So minimum is gonna be five PSI at all times. I'm just gonna put about 20 PSI in each bag. So now we're checking for our leaks and the best way to do this is just a soapy water solution. You're gonna to wanna to spray it not only on this fitting here, but also on our quick connect and you can go ahead and just douse it. And basically what you're looking for is large bubbles to occur. So we'll kind of just let this sit for a second. And if we come back and there's gonna be large bubbles occurring, you're gonna to start to see them forming. That means that we have an air leak and chances are we may just need to tighten down our fitting just a little bit. Um, also, if you over tighten, it can also do that. So find a nice spot to where that's not going to have any bubbles forming. And then on this section, obviously make sure it's pushed in well, but also sometimes again, going back and giving it a nice clean cut again, reinserting, that's gonna help. And if you do need to undo this, make sure you drain the bag first. You'll then push back the collar and pull the line at the same time, and that should come out. So go ahead and do this on the other side, just to make sure that your fitting's also not leaking. Now, once we determine that we don't have any leaks, all that's left to do is start using our airbags. And that's gonna do it for a look and install of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Rear Air Helper Springs on a 2020 Ford F-150.